We've been on the boat for what feels like hours. Turns out the waters of the Blue River are filled with the discarded skins of lost souls. Demons come to the river when they need to look human. They fish out a flesh suit and put it on. The suit hides them so well that they can blend in almost anywhere. The catch is, only certain demons can use them, and even then, the suit doesn't last long. I brought this up because Viv, the chort, who tricked me into bonding with her, was wearing one. She went from a skinny, bat-faced nightmare to a 12-year-old girl with pigtails. The clothes that came out with the skin were Victorian. She looked like a grave doll and she was using it to fuck with me. I caught her watching me sleeping. She was standing in the shadows staring at me. When I got up, she didn't even try to hide it. The little freak shushed me, then walked away like nothing happened. She also made it a habit to pop up everywhere I go. I couldn't take a piss without seeing her. Even if I get rid of her soon, I think I might go fucking crazy with that little freak constantly stalking me. And then there's Captain Charlie. He's a gruff old bastard that looks like a mashup of Joe Dirt and Frodo Baggins. For the most part, he stays to himself. But when we cross paths, I do my best to pick at his brain. So far, I've kept my questions simple and I haven't gotten much, but I've got a feeling this next one might get his attention. Charlie failed to mention he'd be making a stop along the way. We were docking outside the city of Dis when I got my chance to talk to him. I was standing on the main deck, looking at the city and ignoring Viv, who was staring at me again. Goddamn little freak. The city of Dis is surrounded by a massive rusty metal wall. All I could see from the docks were the tops of a few buildings taller than the wall. There's a shanty town set up just outside the city. The place was packed. I could see devils, demons, and all sorts of things I didn't know what to expect. Most importantly, there was a huge three-headed dog patrolling the road leading in. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, so like a midget at a urinal, I was going to have to keep on my toes. When I saw Captain Charlie heading my way, I had to say something. What the hell is that? I asked while pointing at the huge hound as it lifted a leg to piss on a tree. Glancing at the road to get a look for himself, Charlie puffed a cigar and shrugged. It's a dog. What? You ain't ever seen a dog before? That's not a fucking dog. Charlie shrugged indifferently. Then Viv chimed in. It's a hellhound. Lots of cities have them. They won't do anything unless you're trying to escape. Turning back to her, I flinched. Her, her skin suit was starting to rot causing her face to sag. Damn! What the hell happened to you? She smiled, causing the skin on her cheekbones to split, revealing rotten black flesh underneath. This one was 
Before she could explain, I cut her off. That's my fault. I forgot to tell you. I don't give a fucking shit. With that said, I turned to see Captain Charlie walking away. Hurrying to catch him, I jogged up alongside him, then matched his pace. I need your help with something. Answer a question for me. Hypothetically speaking, if I were going to kill a devil, how would I do it? Puffing his cigar, Charlie stopped. After a long sentence, he narrowed his eyes at me and then shook his head. I can't help you, but if you dive in that water, you better know how to swim. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? It ain't complicated. Can I kill him or not? Blowing a cloud of smoke in my direction, Charlie grumbled. Uh, maybe. Before walking away, without looking back, he called out. You two stay on the boat. If you ain't here when I get back, I'm leaving without you. Well, hey, asshole. How long are you going to be gone for? None of your damn business. Just stay put till I get back. Well, maybe. Was well, better than a no. So I let the conversation go and turned to see Viv peeling out of her skin suit. When we locked eyes, she flashed a grin, then hurled a clump of flesh at me. Everything snapped into slow motion. The wad of rotten meat hung in the air just long enough for me to see it. I couldn't even brace for the impact. It slapped against my chest and splattered on my face. It was cold and wet. <sighs> but worst of all, it came with a smell. The aroma was somewhere between sun-baked roadkill or sour milk. <coughs> oh, God. Gagging. I scalded it. So... I scalded at that little psycho bitch, then charged at her. A long story short, I chased her around the boat till I got tired and gave up. About an hour or so later, I went back to the main deck and found her fishing with another suit. A part of me wanted to push her over the rails Instead, I lit one of the captain's cigars and took a seat. After watching her for, for a while, I had to know. What's the point of wearing a disguise? Reeling in a fresh catch, Viv looked over at me. My kind aren't accepted everywhere, so it's probably better if no one knows I'm around. I almost believed her. If I hadn't seen a few shorts in the crowd outside Dis, I would have bought it. Bullshit. There was a bunch of you little fucking psychos right over there. Try again. Holding the skin suit up for me to see it, she asked. What do you think? I think you're trying to change the fucking subject. Answer the goddamn question. Fine, I'm shy. There, I said it. Happy now? Nope. Try the truth this time. Snaring at me, Viv huffed and threw the suit back in the river. Well... Let's just say there's a reason I live in the forest. Puffing on my cigar, I nodded. Your shit, your problem. One 
question, though. Why me? Stepping closer to me and sniffing the air, she smirked. You have Lucy and Sam's sense on you. If it had been just one of them, I probably would have passed you up. Her response left me with more questions. But before I could get to them, Captain Charlie came running towards the pier. The little guy was hauling ass. He had a bag in his hands and a pair of demons hot on his heels. For some reason, when he dove on the boat, the demons stopped. Laying there, laying there, clutching the bag to his chest and laughing, the captain yelled. <laughs> Better luck next time! <laughs> After taking a second to catch his breath, he got to his feet, then opened the bag. Smiling and reaching in, he pulled out a fistful of gold coins and threw them at the demons. Laughing, he yelled, Drinks are on me! Then closed the sack and walked off, whistling a tune. It wasn't long before we were moving again. Once we were a good distance from Dis, Charlie let us know Acheron was the next stop. When I asked what the commotion was about, he told me to mind my own damn business. To be exact, he told me to fuck off. But I got the point. With Viv fishing and the captain occupied, I finally had a moment of peace. I could see the bridge leading into the city. We were almost there. The closer it got, the more I started hearing things. At first, I thought I was imagining it. The faint sound of people screaming came and went on the breeze. Getting up from my seat and stepping over to the rails, I peered out trying to pinpoint where it was coming from. The lights from the city gave a gave the sky above it a yellowish glow, but all I could make out was the silhouette of the landscape. The place was massive. Getting around was going to be a real problem. With that thought, I frowned and turned around to see a short Asian lady wearing thick bifocal glasses staring up at me, flashing a smile that exposed way too many teeth. She asked, How do you like it? I could tell by the smell. It was Viv. Shaking my head and sidestepping her, I tried to walk off. Before I could take three steps, she was in front of me again, with her hands out. She struck a pose to show off her new skins. The body came with a pink and white tracksuit and a nice pair of shoes. This one's gonna last. It's new. Would you believe she was a cannibal? They found the leftovers from 16 bodies in her freezer. But there were a lot more. Pretty nice, right? Yeah, whatever you say. Did you hear that? I paused to listen to the screams. Viv nodded and shrugged. What? The screaming? Oh, I forgot you've never been here. Okay, well, that would be the jumpers. The cliffs outside of Asheron are full of them. What the fuck is a goddamn jumper? Before she could reply, Charlie strolled up and interrupted. All right, we're going to be dropping anchor in a few. And in light of my recent run of good luck, 
I'm gonna do you two a solid. The trip back is on me. But if anybody asks, we were never in this. You understand? Um, Viv and I nodded. And then the old man continued. Akron, the city of fear. So get your mind right before you step off the boat. The place is gonna play tricks on your head. Keep your shit together and go where you need to go. Don't fuck around. I ain't waiting forever. If you get lost, I might not be here when you get back. Fair enough. How long? How long is it too long and how do I get to Trail's End? It's west of the docks. When you hit the street, turn left and head for the hills. I'll give you three days. After that, you're walking back. Assuming three days was more than enough time, I agreed to his terms, then went back to watching the city come into view. The first thing I saw were the cliffs. They were mind-blowing. Nearly vertical sheer rock walls that led to an outcropping of jagged stones. There were so many bodies piled up at the base that the tide couldn't wash them away. Atop the cliffs sat villages that ran the length of the coastline. Every few minutes, someone would exit a village and walk off the cliff. <laughs> I, I watched at least ten of them splatter on the rocks before Viv spoke up. Those are jumpers. They live in slave colonies. The only choice is or, or take the leap. The thing is, you can't die if you're already dead. When they hit the bottom, they're doomed to spend eternity in whatever state they wind up in. The smart ones aim for the body piles. If they land in the right place, there's a chance that they survive. No one ever has, though. <sighs> well, that's good to know. Now back to what I was saying earlier. Why are you here? Adjusting her glasses and frowning, Viv huffed and took a seat. The last time I caught Lucy and Sam sent on someone, they were after the book. The runner got the book out of Narak, but she didn't survive the trip back. When you delivered the book, I knew this was my chance. If Lucy or Sam use the book to ascend, someone has to take their place. That someone is going to be you, and I'm going to be along for the ride. Oh. Oh, so you're just fucking using me. All right. All right. But if you try anything, I'll find a way to fucking kill you, you little psychotic freak! With a sly smirk, Viv got up and looked me square in the eye. For a second, I thought she was going to say something smart. Instead, she calmly walked away. A little under an hour later, we were dropping anchor. As me and Viv were getting off the ship, Charlie tossed me an old-looking pocket watch. It was made of a dark colored metal and had an octopus inscribed on the lid. When I opened it, there were no numbers or hands to display the time. They'd been replaced by a black mirror-like surface with three glowing green lines in the center. Closing it and slipping it into my pocket, I gave Charlie a nod then turned to walk away. Once we were on the land, the old man shouted. When the lines are gone, you're out of time. So make it quick and don't lose my damn watch. I want it back. 
The docks led us to a warehouse where newcomers were being auctioned off to a crowd of devils. We didn't stay long. A pair of shadow demons Viv called collectors had been watching us since we entered the market. I'd seen them out of the corner of my eye, but wrote it off as the place, as, as this damn place was playing tricks on me. They looked like any other shadow, so they were hard to keep up with. The only way to see them was when they moved. By the time I spotted one, they had circled us twice. Pulling away from me and away from the crowd, Viv hissed. Unclaimed newcomers in the market are fair game. We need to go. No questions asked. I followed her out of... I followed her out of there with those things right behind us. Trying to keep up with Viv was impossible. She was too fast. Like I said at the beginning of this, she was faster than a damn hiccup. When she noticed me falling behind, she slowed down, running and shouting to me between breaths. She tried to break it down for me. Keep moving and stay in the light. We have to get to the street. They can't touch us there. As she said that, she made an abrupt turn to avoid the shadow of a light pole. Her right arm slightly crossed into the shadow and a pair of hands reached out to grab her. It was a near miss, but I got the point. We swerved and zigzagged around every shadow on the boardwalk till we hit the street. The second we stepped off the docks, the collectors stopped. One of them immediately took off after someone else, but the other hesitated. It lingered near the corner of a nearby building for a moment, watching us. I felt like I was... I, I, I felt like I was... Like it was memorizing our faces. But since the fucking things don't have eyes, I couldn't be sure. When it finally took off, Viv nudged me and laughed. Looks like you got a new friend. Better hope we can get past him on the way out. It took me a minute to catch my breath and get moving. Charlie's directions were pretty much spot on. As soon as I looked to my left, I could see the hills in the distance. I wasn't exactly sure what we were looking for, but the old man said I'd know it when I saw it. The sidewalks were busy with all sorts of creatures shuffling along doing whatever it is they did on any other day. We were just two more faces in the crowd, and for a brief second, I got lost in the mix. My mind went blank, and I aimlessly plodded along with no destination. The further I went, the harder it got to remember where I was and what I was supposed to be, where I was supposed to be going. Every step I took sent waves rolling along the pavement, morphing the world into something almost familiar. As one block stretched on the next, the, the demons became people. There was suddenly traffic on the street and noise all around me. The shock of it made me stop walking. I had to focus. There was no way this could be real. I knew this place. And when I looked down, I looked down the alley across the street and, and my jaw dropped. I was staring at a younger version of myself creeping through the alley, 
This was where it happened. My first murder. It was the moment that changed my life forever. And for some dumbass reason, I thought I could fix it. The whole thing replayed in my head as I darted across the street, dodging traffic. The guy I was following was a gambler. He hit a he hit it big now and then, and it was my turn. It was supposed to be me. It it was it was supposed to be a simple stick up, but things didn't turn out that way. In any case, when I stepped off the street onto the sidewalk, everything changed. In the blink of an eye, I was standing in the alley with the gun in my hand. Glancing back over my shoulder, I could see an Asian lady yelling something, but I couldn't hear her. It didn't matter. The only thing I needed was the money, and I was gonna fucking get it. Checking. <sighs> Checking to make sure there was a round in the chamber. I froze when I saw my hands. I don't know why, but something seemed wrong. There was something missing, and I couldn't remember what it was. Brushing it off, I moved through the alley quick and quiet till I reached the spot I'd been looking for. It was an old tenement building that had been converted into lofts. When I approached the fire escape, the world around me melted away, revealing a hallway lined with doors. My head was spinning. I couldn't figure out what just happened. Trying to shake it off, I blinked a few times. Then, a dull, thudding sound got my attention. I turned to see that the same Asian lady standing outside the window on the fire escape. I tried aiming my gun at her and telling her to fuck off, but she just looked at me like, like I was crazy. Ignoring her, I turned and went up the hall. That money was so close, I could smell it. All I had to do was to make it to the end of the walkway and go through that door, heart pounding, pulse racing. I picked up the pace, gaining momentum for the impact. In five, four, three, two, one, I lowered my shoulder and crashed through the door. They say things go in slow motion for shit like this, but that's a fucking lie. If anything, it speeds up. Everything happens so fast, your brain barely has time to process it. When the door flew open, I almost lost my balance and fell flat on my face. Turns out, I got some bad information. There were three people in there, and there was only supposed to be one. A woman wearing a gray hoodie and jeans screamed and pulled a gun and fired at me. The shots were wide and right. They missed me by a mile. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm surgical with the steel. When I shout, when I, oh, my mind is so reeling right now. When I shoot, I don't miss. Two shots popped her top like a tall boy. Fun fact, hollow points have a nasty habit of making a mess on the way out. I say that because the back of her head exploded splattering her brain matter on the wall. It was completely disgusting. As she fell, someone else moved 
and I reacted without thinking. Turning and pulling the trigger two more times, I see a guy not much younger than me drop and start screaming. The first round hit him in the lower back as he tried to climb over the sofa. It ripped his guts out. All the way through. Oh, God. The, the second round hit him square in the ass. And, well, let's just say that's a fucked up way to go. Last but not least, I saw my target running towards the restroom, blocking in on a spot between his shoulder blades. I took the shot and everything stopped. I could hear footsteps, but I couldn't move. After a few seconds, that strange Asian lady stepped in front of me, waving her hands, trying to get my attention. When I focused on her, the world around us faded away, revealing a dark alley. The smell of piss and a and hot garbage slapped me in the face as my new reality kicked in. Blinking a few times and looking at the lady, it took a second to remember her name. Viv? Holy fucking shit. Did, did you see that? See what? You ran over here and started pretending your hand was a gun. You ran the dumpster, then started pointing that thing, shouting, bang, bang, like you were shooting. What did I miss? <sighs> Scratching my head in disbelief, I looked over at the dumpster. Charlie told me this place would mess with my mind, but I wasn't expecting it to be so real. Trying to brush it off, I told her it wasn't important and, and we got moving. The streets of Acheron were strange. One minute, we're passing a skyscraper. The next, a medieval blacksmith. Some blocks were packed with street vendors and others were just pawn shops and brothels straight out of the Old West. Out of everything I saw, the one thing that stuck out the most was the lack of people. There were a few here, but the rest were creatures I couldn't even begin to describe. I expected to see torture, mutilation, and total despair. What I got was uptown on a Wednesday night it was borderline boring. If it weren't for a fight between a squid-headed humanoid and a goat man, I would have been disappointed. The hallucinations came and went, so Viv kept me grounded by holding my hand. At first, I hated it, but when I started reliving meeting my ex-wife I was glad she was there the walk took long took so long we had to take breaks during one of our rest stops Viv decided it would be a good idea to steal some shit I was sitting on a bench when she darted by yelling Run. You know, she actually didn't yell it. She just said it like we were sitting in a park somewhere and like, look at the trees, look at the birds. Run. This place is really getting to my, getting to my mind. I looked up when I saw she was running from when I saw who she was running from, I almost panicked. It was one of those lawn gnome things. This one was a lot 
bigger and had a massive club in its hand. The fat bastard chased us for miles before it gave up. Once we were sure we had lost him, Viv doubled over laughing. You should have seen the look on your face. I thought you were going to cry. That was good. Fuck you, you little freak. Why the fuck were we running? Viv laughed so hard she snorted, then reached in her jacket and pulled out a tip jar about half full with gold and silver coins. Looking at it, then at her, I snatched it out of her hand. When I was done taking my cut, I shoved the jar back into her hands and grumbled. Warn me next time, you little fucking thief freak! Still giggling and smiling, she stuffed the rest of the coins in her pocket and threw the jar away. By the time we reached the edge of the city, I was totally exhausted and my feet hurt. I just don't understand I'm dead, right? How the hell can I hurt so much and be so exhausted? This is what I... I yeah, fuck it. Ahead of us, the hill stretched out in the darkness as far as I could see. Dirt roads and dark woods felt like a recipe for disaster. The only thing we had going for us was the fact that Moloch's compound was lit up like a Christmas tree. It stood out like a beacon in the night, so we followed the light. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but the shit got even weirder. There were zombie cavemen, flesh-eating trees, and those nasty little fuckers that bit off two of my fingers. On top of that, we ran through a patch of mushrooms that poisoned us. We were tripping balls for an hour before we realized what had happened. I'm not sure, but I'm almost certain something regrettable went down between me and Viv. We woke up naked in a tree, and I kept catching her smiling at me. Since I can't imagine what that would be like, I decided never, never to bring it up. Ever. In any case, when we got to Moloch's place, things got so incredibly worse. As soon as we stepped foot near the entrance, a group of guards beat the shit out of both of us, then dragged us inside. They locked us in a cage with children. There were only a few, but it was the second time I'd seen kids in hell. Nudging Viv, I asked, How did they end up here? She frowned. They're pedophiles and child murderers. Eternity in hell as a child is their punishment. Hearing that instantly made me look at them differently. I wanted to bash their stupid little faces in, but rather than add to our problems, I sat back trying to sort out what we'd gotten into. The guards hadn't given me a chance to tell them who sent me, so I figured they'd eventually come asking questions. An hour or so passed by before I thought to check the watch. It wouldn't tell me it, it wouldn't tell me the exact time, but it would let me know how much we had left. Half of one of the three lines was gone. We'd lost half of a day. Closing the watch and slipping it back to my pocket, I got up and went to the 
of the cage, the guard was still a tall, faceless man wearing a black suit. He stood across the walkway from us, watching our every move. I couldn't tell if he was looking at me, but I assumed he was, and told him Lucy sent me to speak with Moloch. The fucker just stood there. For a second, I thought it was a statue, till I noticed his suit was moving. Every time I spoke, the ripples would roll across the surface of the suit. When that happened, the thing wearing the suit would slightly nod its head or shift its position. <sighs> Reality in my mind was just bending and twisting. Sounds were distorted. I was, I was having so much trouble keeping the right state of mind. He was right. Charlie was right. This place would fuck with you if you didn't have your head on straight. After a few minutes, a red-skinned demon with big black horns on either side of its head came to the cage. It looked at me, then at Viv, and nodded before grumbling something to the guard and walking away. As the red demon vanished around the corner, the black-faced guard made a sound that caused every muscle in my body to lock up. The pain was indescribable, but I couldn't scream. All I could do was watch as inky black tendrils lashed out from the guard suit and wrapped around me. It lifted me off of my feet then pulled me out of the cage and started down the hall. My vision was fading, but I could hear Viv screaming something just before I blacked out. When I came to, it took a few seconds to clear the fog out of my brain. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, the overwhelming odor of rotten meat and, a, and pine filled my lungs. The taste of the air made my stomach lurch. I wanted to get the fuck out of there. I was in a room so big I couldn't see the ceiling. The walls were made of bones and ahead of me there was the opening to a huge cave. The lip of the entrance was around eight eight feet off the ground and there was fresh blood trailing down from it to the floor. From where I was standing I couldn't see anyone but there was a sound coming from the cave. The wet smacking and crunching of something or someone eating. Slowly it slowly started to register in my brain. The moment I realized what I was hearing, a pair of golden yellow eyes peered at me from the darkness of the cave. Still chewing and eating, a raspy voice slowly hissed. Yeah. Ooh. Sent you. Before taking another bite of whatever it was eating, trying not to focus on the sound of the bone snapping, I got straight to the point. Lucy, she said, you'd be able to tell me where I can find the servants. I stood there listening to him eat for a while before he finally replied. Are you sending them to the pit? 
Depends on how things go. I'm here to pick something up. It shouldn't be a problem. Moloch chuckled. <laughs> Old town. Lucifer's tribute near the bridge. You'll find them there. As his words echoed around me, the sound of footsteps pulled my attention. Off to my right, I had just enough time to see the blank-faced man running at me before everything went black. The next thing I know, I'm lying flat on my back, being slapped awake by Viv. Get up. They let us go. When I opened my eyes, she was staring down at me, smiling. Still groggy from being knocked unconscious. I sat up slowly and tried to focus. It, it took a second for my vision and mind to clear, but, but when it did, I noticed two things. One, we weren't at Moloch's compound. The area we were in look, looked like it had been bombed. The second thing, I... I was looking out. What? I wasn't sure. I was looking out at Viv. What? She was holding a club. Technically, it was a piece of rebar with concrete on it, but she was clutching it like a club. Motioning to it, I asked, What's that for? Still smiling, she looked at it, then at me and tossed it aside. Oh, that nothing. Why'd they dump us in Old Town? What are we doing here? Narrowing my eyes, I glared at her for a long second, then got up and dusted myself off. You were gonna hit me with that. Weren't you, you little psychotic fucker? Hit you? No. Well, maybe just a little bit. Oh, for fuck's sake. God, God you goddamn little freak. Shaking my head and looking around. Whatever. I tried to spot the bridge. It was kind of hard to see. It... Couldn't see much of anything from where we were standing. I needed a better view. Across the street from us, there was a building that had one of its walls blown down. The hole exposed a stairwell leading up to the third floor. It would be a tough climb, but if I could get up there, it might be worth it. Ignoring the little psycho Viv, I moved out. The street was littered with statues of different demons and devils. Most of them were broken. I could only make out parts, but a few were in good shape. One, one in particular caught my attention. It had a huge bird-like skull and a hunched back with long spindly arms. Its legs had too many joints giving them a Z-shape that ended with, with massive hooved feet. As strange as all of this was, the thing I couldn't take my eyes off of were the wings. They hung limply from its back and drug on the ground behind it, but they were perfectly preserved. Every feather in its place, almost flowing in the breeze. I even thought I could see it. I, I 
I, even I could see it was made of stone, but I wanted to touch it. As I reached out to run my hand over the feathers, the fifth grab, grabbed me by my waist. I wouldn't do that. It's a plague demon. Touching it will make you sick. Snatching my arm away, I looked at her, then at the statue. What the fuck happened here? Picking up a rock and throwing it at the statue, Viv chuckled. When Oz took Asheron from Lucifer, he had to get rid of his followers. If he sent them to the pit, Lucifer would just bring them back. So Oz turned them all to stone. This way, they're stuck here forever, and Lucifer loses his soldiers. That is really fucked up. So, all of them are alive? Yep. Most of them are pretty much harmless, but some of them can still mess you up. So, what about the servants? They came later. By then, Oz had control of the city, and old Lou was a non-factor. No one has seen him in like a hundred years. I heard he was down in the... I tried to cut her off by walking away, but she kept rambling as I made my way over to the building. By the time I started climbing, I heard three different rumors and gave less than a shit about any of them. All I wanted to do was to get the quill and get back to the boat, but here I was getting Hell's history from a sidekick I didn't fucking ask for. When I finally made it to the stairs, I noticed Viv hadn't followed me. As that thought crossed my mind, the high-pitched screech of metal Hitting stone grabbed my attention. I turned to see Viv smashing one of the statues with something she'd picked up. Honestly, I was happy she'd found something to do when she caught me looking at her and waved. I gave her the finger, turned around, and headed up the stairs. When I passed the second floor, I heard the familiar chittering of those creatures from the forest. Oh, fuck, not again. Glancing at my left hand with its two missing fingers, I grumbled. Those dirty little motherfuckers. I like to throw them in a damn tree shredder. And I kept moving. It didn't take long to find the broken window with a perfect view. The bridge was a good way off. There was a lot of territory to cross, and I could see at least two camps out there. Digging the captain's watch out of my pocket, I checked to see how much time was left. The first line was gone. I wasn't sure how, how it I'd lost an entire day, but there was nothing I could do about it. Before I could slip the watch back into my pocket, Viv did what Viv does best and snuck up on me and scared the holy fucking shit out of me as I jumped three feet. She was so close, I could almost feel her breath on the back of my neck. At this point, I'm almost certain that little shit can teleport. Just fucking great. I know she's fast, but there's no way she could climb the debris and run up the stairs without making a sound. <sighs> Catching my breath and turning to face her, I scowled at her big stupid smile. She looked very happy as she asked. What are you looking at? We ain't looking at shit. I'm looking for Lucifer's tribute. It's supposed to be near 
the fucking bridge. Scratching her head and biting at her lower lip, Viv blinked a couple of times, then shrugged. It was her first trip, you. Never heard of it. Wait, you said near the bridge? I nodded yes. Then she held up a finger as if she had something and said, Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I do know how to get to the bridge. Once we climbed down and got moving, I realized just how dead Old Town really was. Street for street, block for block, there were statues everywhere. On the parts that hadn't been destroyed, I saw them standing in doorways or in mid-stride, strolling down the sidewalk. As crazy as hell had been there, There was something about it that, that bothered me. At one point, I thought the hallucinations were coming back. The statues were moving. Their heads would slightly turn to watch us walk by. On the next block, there were more than usual. We had to go around them to make it to the next street. Two streets later, there were so many that we had to take a detour through an alley to go around all of them. It got worse from there. We never saw them move, but somehow they were cutting us off at every turn. We tried running, climbing, going on from rooftop to rooftop, and no matter where we went, there they were. They never physically did anything, but it felt, but I felt a real sense of danger every time we got a, got a little too close. I, I don't know how she did it, but Viv managed to keep us headed in the right direction. We cut through buildings and weaved around rubble and twisting and turning until we came to an old 1930s movie theater. The place had seen better days, but it was still standing. The old marquee buzzed and popped as the lights flickered, strobing the street with a dull yellow glow. For the first time, since we started walking, the statues were behind us. I glanced back and had to scratch my head. All of them had their backs turned as if they were walking away. Whatever this place was, they weren't getting any closer. Relieved, I turned my attention back to the theater as a tall, dark figure came into view. Standing out front was none other than the grim fucking Reaper himself. I couldn't believe it. I guess growing up seeing the Reaper in cartoons, on t-shirts, and just about everywhere else turned him into a star in my eyes. It is that who I think it is? Holy fucking shit. It is. That's the... Viv cut me off. Relax. He's a Reaper, not the Reaper. There's lots of them, and they get offended if you say they look alike. Let me talk to him. You just hang back here and try not to geek out. I was so excited I couldn't stand still. Viv strolled over and struck up a conversation. After a second, the Reaper raised his arm and pointed to the right. I almost started slow clapping. It was like watching a work of art. I'm pretty sure I was grinning from ear to ear when Viv glanced over at me and motioned me to follow her. Once we were moving again, 
She told me Lucifer's tribute was a few blocks away. I still hadn't figured out how we would get the quill, but it was too late to turn back. When we were finally close enough to see the place, we hid in an old building to watch the scene for a while. The tribute was huge. In the center of a circular pit sat an <laughs> obsidian statue of an angel lying on the ground, reaching for the sky. The hand of the statue reached slightly above the lip of the pit and the fingers were on fire. Around the pit, the servants had camps set up. They weren't much to look at, shacks and lean-tos mostly. The servants themselves were a mixed bag of humans and low-level demons. All of them were sickly looking. They shambled. They just, they shambled around, arguing and fighting each other most of the time. I was starting to think that we could just walk in there, beat the shit out of a few of them and take the quill. I was in the process of trying to figure out where the damn thing was when I saw something that changed my mind. These guys didn't have much. But what they did have was a hellhound. It only had two heads, and it wasn't as big as the one in Dis. But it was gonna be a fucking problem. After watching it for a few seconds, I noticed it was chained to a block of concrete near the shed. Didn't you say hellhounds won't bother you unless you're trying to escape saying I was what I was looking at Viv nodded yeah but that was a Cerberus that's an Othris not the same thing if it's watching the quill there's no way we're getting it out of there I thought about it for a second and smiled to myself you're fast right how hard would it be for you to outrun that fucking thing? Looking at the hellhound, then at me, Viv shook her head. It doesn't matter if I outrun it because it will never stop chasing the quill. Wait, so if we get the quill and give it to Sam, the hound's gonna go after him? As much as I hate to admit it, Oh, we had a moment. We sat there smiling at the thought of that two-headed freak ripping Sam to shreds. <laughs> Without another thought, we started working on a plan. I suggested we sneak around to where the shack was, steal the quill, and we'd be out of there before they knew what had hit them. Viv pointed out that the hound would give us away the second we got close. After thinking about it for a second, I counted eight servants and then got up. We're wasting time. Let's go in there, kill these asshats and take the quill. The chain should keep Cujo for a while. By the time he breaks it, we should be on the boat and headed back. Viv laughed. Kill him? Ha, huh. you mean send him to the pit? No. I reached for the knife Charlie had given me and froze when I realized the knife was gone. Shit. They must have taken it when the glint of light reflecting off of something metallic grabbed my attention. I turned to see Viv cleaning her nails with my knife. Storming over and snatching it out of her hands. <sighs> the 
exasperated. I didn't know what to say to the gut. Ah! I turned around and I headed for the exit. I wasn't really mad, but I didn't want to. I didn't want her to know that. I needed her to believe I was about to blow for this next part to work. When we hit the street, I started an argument about her keeping her hands off my shit. By the time we'd crossed the road and reached the tribute, three of the servants were coming towards us. The first one to reach us was a gray demon with electric blue eyes and a horse-like face. It was tall and thin with hard-looking skin. For a second, I wondered if I'd be able to cut him. Holding up a bony hand, he said, Stop. Only the Chosen may enter. Ignoring him, we kept arguing, giving the other two time to get within striking distance. The other two, a human woman with tattoos on her face and a pot-bellied dwarf with cracked red skin, flanked us to either side. As soon as the dwarf reached for me, I grabbed him by the wrist with one hand and used the other to drive my knife down to the top of his skull. The feel of the blade punching through that midget's melon gave me such a rush. I'm not sure what Viv did to that other chick, but I heard her scream just before Horseface slammed into me. For a skinny bitch, that gray bastard had heavy hands. He punched me in the head a couple of times and I almost went down. Once I regained my footing, I ducked a left hook. My blade found the gray goober's gut and spilled his innards on the concrete. <laughs> that made me feel so goddamn exhilarated. With three down and five to go, I turned to spot Viv beating one of those goat men to death with a rock. It was bloody and brutal, and I'm not ashamed to admit, I may have gotten a little wood watching her dispatch that fucker. I gotta give it to those guys. Most losers would have ran when they saw their pals get wiped. The remaining four stood their ground. We ran through them relatively quickly, but they put up a fight. In the end, aside from a few bruises and scorch marks from one shithead throwing fireballs, we kicked ass as a team. It felt good to win for once. And after an excruciating hour of failed attempts to get to the quill, we pulled it off and headed back to the boat. Stay tuned for part four of Welcome to Hell. Ha, 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 ha